Good afternoon. <clears throat> My topic uh, this afternoon will be still a volume, but uh, I will derive the formula for taking the volume with of a prostone of a right circular cone. It's a little bit complicated on the figure, guys. Okay, so let us start. Lesson 67, Integral Calculus, Volume, Main Topic, this afternoon, Prosto of a Right Circular Code. This is a Prosto. <coughs> uh, the shape of a lampshade is a Prosto. It's got uh, an upper uh, dimension radius R and lower bigger radius R. So actually the figure is a prostome of a right circular cone. Uh, it, it actually it emanates from a cone but it was cut something like a certain portion at the top. So when you cut something from what they call this hold on guys it is something like this we got a cone and if you cut some part at the top portion what will remain will be a prostome that's why I told you prostome of a right circular cone uh, it's uh, originally a right circular, right circular cone but we cut it at some portion at the top so what will come out is a prostome okay. so the figure is something like this the relevance of the discussion this afternoon will be on how to derive the formula for taking the volume of a prostome in terms of the upper radius small r, lower radius bigger r at the bottom, and altitude edge. And actually, that formula is this. I will give you now the answer, but uh, later on, uh, I will bring out the derivation. Final formula for taking the volume of the prostome is volume. You can Google this one, guys. This is correct. This is pi over 3 times h times the quantity r square, small r square, big r square, plus the product of the small r and the big r. r square is actually an area multiplied by height, so it will be volume. So pi over 3 times h times this quantity actually it's volume so the unit should be actually cubic units you can google this one uh, this equation here and if you try to bring it out the general formula for taking the volume of a prostome of a right circular cone will be pi over 3 h times the quantity r square plus big r square plus the product of small r and big r. Okay, uh, let's proceed with the derivation. Uh, we draw the graph on the Cartesian coordinate system. This is the y-axis, x-axis. Uh, we put on the Cartesian the prostome uh, to be symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. Meaning, the left half is the same as the right half. Okay? And to take the volume of this one, uh, why volume? <coughs> In real life, guys, uh, the, what you call this, the water container, if you try to revert the position of this one, it's actually a water container. Okay? And if it's a water container, we are interested in how much volume will that container could carry. That's why the significance of the topic this afternoon is actually volume. We are interested in the volume that it could carry. Okay. Oh, let's bring out the proper solution now uh, by using horizontal slice. Horizontal slice. Okay. This is the differential area. So to take the total volume of this prostome here, 
we rotate this differential area one complete revolution with respect to the y-axis and if we rotate one slice this will be the configuration okay the thickness will be dy and what will come out if we try to rotate it will be a circle so to take for the volume of a circle with thickness uh, dy differential volume will be equal to differential area times thickness equal to pi times radius quantity square times thickness uh, this radius here is uh, a complicated one why complicated <coughs> because uh, as this dy moves from zero to h the the value of the xr on the right is actually varying it's not uh, it's not constant it, it varies so the solution will be a little bit complicated so we could not use the direct multiplication like in the rectangle or square okay uh, this angle here varies meaning the value of uh, xr as it moves from zero to x is actually varying it moves as a certain angle okay so Let's uh, bring out the relation of the variables to formulate the differential equation and how to take the volume. But uh, before that, uh, I will try to bring out two right triangles. So this one, guys. I bring out the right triangles to formulate the equation. This is the smaller right triangle. This is the bigger right triangle. Uh, this link here for the bigger right triangle, it is a big R minus a small r. The horizontal side of the smaller upper right triangle, it will be x minus r. x minus r. And this height here is x minus y. Because this is h and this is y, so this should be h minus y. So actually, we could bring out two right triangles, something like this. Uh, theta, theta, right? This is h minus y. This is x minus r. This is big R minus small r. And this is h. Okay, then we take the tangent of theta. Tangent of theta by using the first right triangle is x minus y over x minus r. Using the bigger right triangle is equal to x all over r, big r minus small r. Okay, then you, you could uh, remove this one now. So after equating the two uh, ratios, x minus y over x minus r, this should be equal to x over r minus r. I cross multiply. Uh, it's just pure algebra. Uh, in this equation, we are given x, we, get, we are given big R, we are given a small r, okay? And uh, there is a variable y and there is a variable x. So actually, uh, we could find the relation of y as a function of x or x as a function of y, okay? We derive the relation of y as a function of x or x as a function of y from this. There's no magic. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Therefore, tangent of theta will be x minus y over x minus r equal to x over r, big R minus small r. Then you try to remove this one. Okay, uh, I will expedite my simplification, guys. I could bring out the complete uh, simplification, but uh, it takes lots of time. Since I, I write the lecture already on the board, I, I, I will try to expedite. Okay. If we try to cross-multiply for this one and solve for x, solve for x, what will come out for x will be this. It's pure algebra. Then if we now try to place the proper subscript, that x is actually xr. xr.
This is XR, this is XL, and the thickness is dy. This X here is actually refers to this. The variable uh, uh, inclination of the right circular cone, okay? okay? This is variable. But for XL, uh, th there's no problem because as dy moves from 0 to H, the movement is actually straight line. So actually, XL is equal to 0. But for XR, Okay, it varies. Uh, it varies at a certain angle. It is not your constant. And that XR is actually this. Okay. Therefore, the pressure volume now will be equal to... Uh, the pressure volume will be pi XR minus XL quantity squared, the variable radius times dy, equal to pi times the quantity xr minus zero quantity squared times dy. But since uh, xl is zero, what will come up will just be simply the threshold volume will be pi xr quantity squared times dy. Okay? To bring out the differential equation, uh, we must have to square xr. Uh, <coughs> just square this one. It will be a... Uh, it's not complicated uh, see, since this is a three term and we try to square this one, okay? What will come out will be six term, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? This will be the expansion of XR quantity square. Okay, uh, you can do that in your home, guys. Uh, expand this one to the second power. What will come out is this one. It's, it's six term. R square S square to H R R Y minus two R Y R square H Y R square Y square minus two R R Y square. The last part is actually the square of the this one. The square of this one. It's R square Y square because minus R Y quantity square is actually this one. Okay, then. <coughs> The integral of the differential volume, expedite a little bit, okay, equal to, we are following this, pi. Uh, we got an h square, right? I bring it out, so this is h square. Times the value of xr square after the square, it is this. I just cut, we just copy this one. Six terms, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, then try to integrate. If we try to integrate now, oh, it's a little bit expedited, right? The first one will be the integral of r square h square. What will come out? r is constant, is h constant, so the integral of dy will be v y. So what will come out will be r square h square times y. You got it? Second one. These are all pure constant. Okay? So it now falls under the power formula. So this will be... Okay? Uh, y square over 2. So that 2 cancel with this. So, so the second term after the integration will be HRR Y square. Uh, this one, same. Power formula also. Okay? Because these are all pure constant. We put over to over here, it will cancel out, so no more equation over there, R square H times Y square. This one, uh, power formula, one third R square Y cube. Power formula also, two thirds R R Y cube. Okay, this one, power formula also, R square over three, or one third R square Y cube, with the limit from zero to H. Okay, guys, uh, the integration is simple. Uh, the pr only problem is that uh, you've got six terms, so take it easy, right? So if we now try to place the upper limit, this will be the first value. If we try to substitute here, second value, third value, fourth value, fifth, and six. If we try to place y equal to x. But for the lower limit, minus open quantity the lower limit, 
uh, for the lower limit, uh, there's no problem. If we put y to be zero, this will become zero now. The operation is multiplication, right? right? This will become zero also. This will become zero. Again, it's zero. It's zero because the operation is multiplication. If we replace y by zero, all the terms will be multiplied by zero. So if we subtract the value of the lower limit, okay, it will be zero plus zero minus zero plus zero minus zero plus zero. Zero here, zero, 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 zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or actually, the lower limit has no effect on the final answer. Right? The significance only is the, the upper limit. So if we try to simplify this one, this is now pure algebra, guys. I could show you the complete, uh, what you call the simplification. But this is now the complete uh, simplification. Okay? Small r, big r times h, one third r square h minus two thirds r r h plus one third r square h. Okay? Actually, h square and h square cancels, but there is still a common factor h inside. Oh, h, 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 h. We bring it out. So this is pi times h. What will come out will be one third r square, big r square, one third small r square, plus one third the product of small r times big r. One third, one third, one third, we bring it out. So this should be pi h over 3. I will now try to re rearrange the formula. R square, big R square, plus the product of a small r times a big r. So the final formula on how to take the volume of a prostome of a right circular code is volume equal to pi over 3 times h, times the quantity small r square, plus big r square, plus the product of a small r times a big r, cubic units. Uh, that's it, guys. The derivation of the formula for taking the volume of a prostome using integral calculus and using horizontal slice. Oh, that's the importance of integral calculus. All the formulas we are using under lower mathematics actually was derived from integral calculus. Okay, good afternoon, Los Angeles.